for y'all. This is the Chevy engines. It goes for the Tahoe, the Yukon, the Denali's, Silverado's, and uh, this is the Sierra. All right. I cleaned it up a lot. I ain't done. Because I like to get it real close to spick and span. <sighs> okay. I'm thinking all these start leaking at the same time. After a hundred thousand miles, that starts slowly. But when you get to 150, close to 200, leak is, you know, a little bit more. This truck has 344,000 miles. Okay, what I did, you can see the blue lining is the valve cover. See I work with two hands, and I just can't video. I'm going to have to get a camera and put it on my uh, my forehead or whatever. So when I'm working it, you know, I don't have nobody to hold it. But uh, this is not really showing you how to do the work. It's basically showing you uh, about these oil leaks. The valve cover, as you can see, it's slanted. It got that slant. So if the oil going to leak, the oil going to leak down there. See how this look all clean? I just cleaned it. It was black. As you can see it, all the way down there, I cleaned it. So if the oil is all right here, it was leaking from the valve cover and also leaking from the lower intake. So, okay. Or do bounce around in here because these are your knock sensors uh, where they go at, screw into. Got the knock sensors out. But this right here is where the oil goes. So, a gasket, the lower intake gasket, go ahead, I took it off. I'll show you. This how it look. So that'll leak. And as it don't, it'll leak down here. That's what got all this. And then what trick B? I'm thinking the the real oil seal was leaking. So I look back here. Right. This is the back. I'm going to tell you. I cleaned it, but you can tell the oil is all right here. And that oil pressure sensor. You know, when they go bad, that'll leak. So, the combination. Look all that kicked up oil on, on, on that. Oil. Look at that. Look, look, now, look on top of the transmission. There's no way a real oil seal gonna leak on the top part of the transmission you know what i'm saying so i already changed the oil pan gasket along with the valve cover gasket and it was still leaking so it's coming from the top sliding down on top of the transmission going around the sides you know because this is the rear this is the rear so this is where the engine oil pan ends at right you know at the bottom I'm talking about at the bottom so this is gonna drop down on the rear end of the oil pan you see and if it's you see I, I changed the water pump too but before I put the water pump on I seen oil all down there so this can drip oil down here and get on the front part of the oil pan but it's good to change all the gaskets anyway. So I end up changing the oil pan gasket. I end up changing the valve cover gasket. I'm changing the lower upper intake gasket. I'm changing that on sensor in the back or pressure sensor. And I'm going to clean it real good. And I did a transmission pan gasket too. But I'm going to tell you. I should do the rear transmission seal. But this is a lot of work. So I I do that 
later. It's just I'll do that later. So just want to stop this oil leak. Oil leaks. So I know the, you know, I'll end up doing the timing cover, the gasket, and front oil seal another day. And I save the rear oil seal to do probably in the springtime. It's going into the, it's fall. Going to the winter will be too cold. So I just wait the springtime. But, yeah, it tricked me. I thought it was the real oil seal. But, you know, it's, it's leaking from the top. And you can get under the, the truck and shine up. When you see oil coming from the top. You'd be like, that's not the real oil seal. You see what I'm saying? The real oil seal would just leak down. You know what I'm saying? No ways on go push up and then come back down. This is the old four. But basically they got the same engine. But that oil leak had me fool. And then on top of that, watch out for these hoses because look what cheap plastic does. I'm moving it to the side and it just popped off. So, but look, if you're doing this, you might as well replace it. Because it's brittle. That's a lot of heat. Heat does. It make it brittle. So, you push it on it or whatever. Boom. So, that means any time now, it's going to come apart. So, I'm going to go ahead and change both. You can buy them from a auto parts store. Yeah, it's not that expensive. Heater, heater core holders, and let out that. You know, I got a. How about these gaskets? I'm gonna change too. See these gaskets? Upper intake gasket. Come to kit, you should get lower and upper. They got clips on them. Let's take the clips off. I mean, just look. Look at this shit. Sensor plug, just a wire harness to the knock sensor. Might as well go ahead and get this. Uh, this too. I got a knock sensor here. Yeah, might as well get the knock sensors too, cause they get brittle. They get brittle, and they chip away. They chip away on the plastic. I'm gonna clean all this car cleaner and degrees. See how that broke off? It just get brittle and it comes off with the um, wire harness. And the wire harness can get brittle and they can break. Cause the knots. She had no cold for it, but might as well do it. While I'm doing this, I'm gonna go back down there. Yeah, guys. It's some work, but it's. You don't need to be no ace mechanic to do it. You just gotta have basic tools. And this baby right here to disconnect the. Fuel line because I don't like taking the fuel injectors out and then pushing it to the side and take you know what I'm saying because you can lose the O rings on the injectors and they'll fall off. And if you push the fuel rail back in the intake, you might not push it back in correctly and then you start the vehicle and get you know basically just stick this in there, push it in. Sometimes it'd be hard to push in, so I use my pliers, go around it, and use that push, and you need two hands, and then it'll pop off. All right, fellas. This goes for the Chevy engines. 5.3, what is it? 6.0, and there's another one, right? 4.6, the same? Yeah. 
Yep. I'm gonna find out. What? Uh, what this is? I know that's all pressure. So I'm gonna find out what this is. I'll take that off. See, we got a gasket on the other side. Cause I might as well just change that too. This this truck got three hundred forty-four thousand miles on. I might as well just take it and see how far it can go. You know, with no leaks and uh. Keep it tuned and change the oil. And I can't do nothing about this or kick up in I can scrape it, but it's gonna take all day. And I don't wanna get that big chunks of it down into the exhaust, but I guess the heat will what? Flake it out because it get in the cat like converter. You need something to eat it up and dissolve it. You know what I'm saying? But this Whenever you change your oil, just use engine oil flush. Like run it through your engine before you change your oil. Run it into the car vehicle, stay on for 10 minutes, five, five to 10 minutes, it get hot. Depends on the weather outside, the temperature in your car gotta be off of cold. Get the engine hot enough, and then do an oil change. And if you're doing three oil changes a year, or a thousand miles, you put an engine flush in there. All three times, and then gonna harm them. It'll break some of this carbon build up. You know, well, you know, because you don't want to clog the intake and get clogged up too. The upper intake, this thing right here, it's, it's in this. You know what I'm saying? I would want to replace this whole thing too. Alright fellas, like and subscribe, thank you.